Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 25th, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. 103 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends. Dr. Grace Vuoto, she is a columnist at the Boston Broadside. She's the communications director of the Boston Broadside. You can read her work at bostonbroadside.com. She's absolutely brilliant. And full disclosure, she is my better half, my wife. Um, Dr. Grace putting liberals in their place. There's a lot I want to talk to you about, Dr. Grace, but before we get into the growing calls for a second special prosecutor now by many Republicans, I think it's going to be inevitable. There will be one. Uh, and the media now furiously trying to defend Spygate and the spying of President Trump. I'm just curious. You and I last night were watching some of the late news coverage, the local news coverage of the rally that was held yesterday. And you said something to me that was very interesting. Can you share that with the audience, please? Uh, <laughs> hi, Jeff. It's great to be on with you. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, we said about, so being, about being blacklisted. About, about the conservatives being blacklisted. About, about Jeff definitely. Cooner being blacklisted. Conservatives and Jeff Cooner leading the pack are blacklisted in this state. Now, what I found really refreshing about the rally was we saw people power out there. I mean, it was so fun to see members of Cooner country on the evening news, even as they're blacklisting you, like not showing you, but they showed at least we got Cooner country, and at least we got the story out there. And that really is a tremendous testament to everybody that participated, everybody that is giving legs to this story. And Jeff, you know what? It's really sad in this state, I think we have a phenomenon, which is conservatives in hiding. You know, conservatives in the closet. Gays are no longer in the closet, but you know who's in the closet? It's conservatives. Uh, they are afraid to speak because of possible retaliation, and there is retaliation. Uh, their jobs are threatened. Their livelihood is threatened. Their social standing is threatened. So what we saw yesterday was truly remarkable that all those people out there were asserting their rights as Americans, you're not going to tell us who to be, what to say, what to think. We are conservatives. We're proud to be conservatives. We're going to defend this country. We're going to defend families. We're going to defend Christianity. We're going to defend traditional values. We have truth on our side, and we're ultimately going to win. So I was really, really impressed with what I saw. I want to congratulate everybody out there, and I want this to be an awakening. We have to all speak up. I know there is a risk to all of us, but we have to do it. And those conservatives that are in the closet should come out of the closet. Come out of the closet. It's okay. The more of you come out, the less retaliation there will be. The only way that they continue to have power on us is when too many stay silent. When there's too many that come out, well, you just can't stop what we have to say. You can't stop who we are, and you can't stop the movement that is being created. Dr. Grace Vuoto, she's a columnist, communications director at the Boston Broadside. You can check out her work at bostonbroadside.com. Again, full disclosure, she's my better half. Uh, really, the brain's in the family. I just take out the garbage, but let that go. Uh, all right, Dr. Grace, I know you're working on a very important column. There's now a growing chorus up on Capitol Hill. I think it's now almost inevitable. Demanding a second special counsel to investigate the FBI and the deep state. What exactly is going on? Well, another uh, really impressive moment. We see that there is a growing call for answers to questions that we have been raising. Some like you have been raising on talk radio now for almost two years. So you have 12 Republicans who have held a press conference, they've put together a resolution, and they're saying, listen, there is so much damaging evidence against the leadership of the FBI and the DOJ that we now need a special counsel. 
they're saying to the Speaker, House Speaker Ryan, put this resolution on the floor. And, you know, Cooner Country, just like we're putting pressure on Feely, just like we got the governor to comment on this, we now have to put pressure on Republicans, put this kind of measure to the floor, let's put pressure and put pressure until a second special counsel is called. When you actually read the resolution, and you know I love going right to the primary source as a trained historian, and I just finished reading the resolution, it's unbelievable. The resolution is pointing out tremendous abuses in the FISA warrant process. You know, you've documented so much of this. But basically, in getting FISA warrants, they're violating the very protocols that they have established. So we definitely need to find out why that happened. Another big question, why did the Hillary Clinton probe come to an end in the manner that it did? And what was the relationship exactly between Lynch and Clinton, uh, Bill Clinton, that is, when they met on the tarmac? How did that translate into pressure on Comey? What about the intricate relationship between Comey and McCabe to squash the investigation? Why did the probe into the Clinton Foundation fail? Why did Uranium One probe not result in any criminal charges? So there, when you see it all in a document, you just cannot believe it because it's all listed. We've been hearing it in bits and spurts. You put it all in one document, and it's absolutely astonishing. There's no question that we need a second counsel. And then there's a whole third category of, of um, questions that the resolution raises is, why and how did the Donald Trump Russia probe begin? How exactly did it begin? Why was that informant, that spy, sent? And why was he sent way before there was an official investigation? Bingo. Into the so-called Russia Trump collusion. Bingo. I think Dr. Grace, I think you push your finger on it. This this is why I think this is going to be another Watergate. Because what we're now finding out is what Comey's testified under oath. What the FBI was telling the New York Times, the Washington Post, it's all on record that this FBI investigation of President Trump for alleged Russia collusion took place in late July 2016. That's when they say it began. Really? Because Stefan Halper was already spying a month before that we know of. So what's clear is that they were already spying on Trump months, at least a month, if not months before they claimed they started their investigation. So that means this was a deep state operation from the beginning. And my question to you is this. Trump has now called it Spygate. He's ordered the Department of Justice, he's ordered this FBI, Christopher Wray, to now launch a full formal investigation. Do you think people like John Brennan, Clapper, Comey, McCabe, uh, Strzok, Page, Loretta Lynch, will they end up going to jail? How deep does this scandal go? Well, look, Jeff, I think there's no question about it that you had a cabal a cabal of the top leadership. So I don't want to impugn everybody in the DOJ. We don't want to impugn everybody in the FBI. But there was definitely a cabal. And we don't know exactly to what extent this cabal was, how exactly it was operating. Because as you know, Jeff, on the workplace, sometimes you have a superior that gives an order. And even some subordinates, they don't really want to do it. They don't really approve. But they feel like they have to. So I think, why, why do we need a special counsel? Because we need to see what exactly was the chain of command. Where was their resistance? Because there's one thing that is 100% clear, is that every step of the way, they were violating their very own protocols. There's no dispute about that. That's a matter of fact. They were violating the very rules that they have in place on how to put together a FISA warrant, how to conduct an investigation, what to say to the public or not to say. They were violating all of this. That's why you have this public outcry. So the question is, who was ordering the violation? To what extent was there pushback against that? You know, in every organization, when there is a violation of protocol, there are people that are uncomfortable with it. So who was pushing back? And then when we get the answer to that question, we know how deep and how far it went. Now, you asked a very important question. Will anybody ever go to jail? I don't know the answer to that question because this is a moment of testing in our republic. If nobody goes to jail, it will be a huge failure for us. But if we do manage to get justice for all these abuses 
then we can begin to heal and restore this republic and restore the faith in the legal system for everybody. Dr. Grace, um, the media now, they're rocked by this. They did not think all of this was going to come out. They wanted to keep it on the Russia narrative. It's now blowing up in their face, the Russia collusion narrative. So now CNN, MSNBC, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Boston Globe, they're going in overdrive claiming that Spygate is a conspiracy theory being peddled by Donald Trump. And listen now to Steve Schmidt. He is a paid MSNBC analyst. He was John McCain, McManiac's former campaign manager, when McCain ran for the presidency in 2008 and lost to Obama. Listen now to Schmidt basically sum up what the media now has been saying for days and days and days. Roll it, Brittany. And the, and the real issue now is what's the next transgression? Where's the next time that the Department of Justice backs up because of the whims, because of the demands of the, of the president? We're moving, as John Heilman said, closer and closer to the crisis, to the critical hour. And the rule of law in this country must be defended. There's a potential, absent any defense of it, by leaders in this country that will be living in a very different type of country for 140 plus years. The rule of law has held in the United States of America and the spinning of these conspiracy theories, the constancy of the attacks, the victimization that Trump puts upon himself, always blaming someone, this nefarious conspiracy. This is the hallmark of autocratic leadership back to the beginning of time. This is not normal in a democratic republic like the United States. So Spygate is a conspiracy. And if Trump keeps demanding that the Justice Department or the FBI investigate it, you're, it's, a, it's a dictatorship. And we're going to see a constitutional legal crisis. What do you say to that argument? Well, it's absolutely ridiculous because, you know, when a, the attorney general appoints an inspector general, for example, that's part of the rules that are established to make sure that even our law enforcement agents behave appropriately. So recently, what did the inspector general find? He found that McCabe acted improperly and McCabe was fired. So we already have a system in place in this country of checks and balances. And that's all that we're asking for. We're asking for those checks and balances to be fully enforced. They called for a special counsel based on what they thought was evidence, you know, for this Russia-Trump collusion. We have far more evidence that there was profound misconduct in the DOJ and the FBI. And therefore, if a special counsel was appropriate for them on flimsy evidence, it's more than appropriate for us when you see the mountain of evidence that we have. We even have the firing of an official like McCabe for wrongdoing. So, no, I think Schmidt is totally off base. You know, he's the useful idiot. He's the useful idiot on the mainstream media because he was McCain's former campaign manager. They like to call him as though somehow by having him on, uh, he's a Republican who is speaking ill of fellow Republicans, you know. So they think it gives their argument a lot more weight. Look, Jeff, they're far from done. What they're saying in the mainstream media is that uh, the other investigations against other presidents, whether it was Iran-Contra or uh, Benghazi or Bill Clinton, they went on for years, and they want the Russia-Trump investigation to go on for years. So they're just going to keep going with this narrative, and I think one of the ways to smash it is to continue to present the counter-evidence like these House Republicans did and a special counsel that will then put the pressure on them. They keep saying, you know, "Ah, is Flynn going to flip? Is Cohen going to flip? Is Manafort going to flip? You know what? I want to start seeing McCabe and Comey flip on each other. Who's going to flip against Loretta Lynch? What about Lynch flipping on Obama? What about the Clintons flipping against the Obamas and vice versa? That's the conversation I want us to have. We have been talking with Dr. Grace Vuoto, communications director and columnist at the Boston Broadside. You can check out her work at bostonbroadside.com. Dr. Grace putting liberals in their place. And today, boy, <laughs> she delivered big time. Dr. Grace, as always, thanks so much. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. 
<laughs> and I'll speak to you next Friday. I look forward to it, Jeff. And congratulations again to you and to all of Tuner Country. What a great rally. God bless you. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye. 617-266-6868. Okay, more with your calls. And McManiac now admits in his book he was sparked part of the FBI spying operation against President Trump. And if you don't like it, you can go to hell. That story, your reaction, next. 123 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends. Listen now. I mean, this story, it's like a, a really, it's like a Jean Le Carré novel. It just, when you thought it couldn't get more bizarre or stranger, listen now to this. So, uh, by the way, a texter, 857, I think makes a very good point, says, Jeff, don't call Stefan Halper a spy, call him a mole. Because that's really what he was. He was a mole to try to get the Russia hoax in motion. He's completely right. So, here you have this massive spying operation, a counterintelligence operation by the deep state, the Ob- Obama's administration, Obama's FBI, Obama's CIA, to essentially now infiltrate and surveil and spy on the Trump campaign, and then to bring him down by manufacturing this phony Russia collusion narrative. Well, now it turns out, not just is Steve Schmidt, his former campaign manager, shilling for the deep state, the FBI, the CIA, and the establishment. But listen now to McCain. Look now, listen now to McShame and McManiac. In his latest book, he now actually admits, yes, I was the one who got the Christopher Steele dossier, the bogus unverified dossier, and I personally gave it to James Comey. In fact, according to him, Listen, he lays it all out. This to me is an incredible story. He um, claims, here's how it happens. He claims that at a security conference in Canada in November 2016, McManiac claims that he was approached by Sir Andrew Wood, who is a former British ambassador to Moscow. He's also, by the way, a friend of Shazam, the former British spy Christopher Steele, the author of the notorious the 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 the, the P dossier, the, the the Golden Showers dossier, and now according to McManiac in his book, he had never met Sir Andrew Wood before. He never met him, but at this conference, this stranger, this this ambassador, never met him before, walked up to him and said, "You got to look into this Russia connection with Trump and the Trump campaign." And he said, really? Oh, yeah. And there's this guy that I know I can vouch for him. Oh, he's a great spy. Great spook. Christopher Steele. He's got the dossier. You're kidding. Yeah. You got to meet with Christopher Steele. So apparently he just takes this guy's word for it. He says, okay, we'll meet Christopher Steele. Even though he never met Wood before, he never met Steele before. So he then claims that this was his, quote, obligation and his patriotic duty to go after and get this steel dossier. But he doesn't go himself. He claims that he sends his little uh, gopher, okay, his aide, his flack, this guy called David Kramer, who, by the way, is a former State Department official with deep ties to the Hillary State Department. But let that go. He then sends David Kramer, he claims, to go to London, And according to him in the book, very vague, no specifics, he meets with Christopher Steele. And Christopher Steele, according to McManiac, gives him the dossier. And Kramer flies back to Washington. And Kramer then gives McManiac the dossier. And McManiac says, when I got the dossier, his words, I didn't know if it was verified. I didn't know if it was true. I didn't know if it was false. I knew nothing about the dossier, but it was my patriotic duty to give this unverified dossier, his words, not mine, unproven dossier. I had to give it to FBI Director James Comey. I made an appointment. I called. 
We, I met him at the FBI headquarters. We spoke for 10 minutes. I gave him the dossier and I said, you need to investigate. And in his book, he says, anybody who criticizes his decision to do this, quote unquote, can go to hell. Now, a couple of quick points, then I want to throw it open to you. 617-266-6868 is the number. Number one, I don't believe him. He's lying. I know he's lying, and I'll tell you how I know he's lying. The Washington Post published a story a couple of months ago that Kramer never received the dossier. That's the McCain hack, the McCain flack that he sent off allegedly to London. He never got the, st- the dossier from Christopher Steele in London. No, 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 no. He got the freaking dossier from Fusion GPS, the opposition research firm that the Clinton campaign used. They gave it to him in Washington. Not in London, in Washington. At some cafe in Northern Virginia. Furthermore, the New York Times even reported that the Fusion GPS co-founders, Glenn Simpson in particular, they actually helped McManiac disseminate and hand out the dossier, not just to the FBI, to the CIA, to the NSA, so it could be disseminated all over, including to the mainstream media. McCain was helping Fusion GPS Pump this story out to CNN, MSNBC, AP, the New York Times, the Washington Post, so they could go on about collusion and Russia to build up support and momentum for the eventual appointment of Robert Mueller as the special counsel. So when everything is said and done, I want you to think about this. McManiac was actually now part and parcel, an integral part of the covert deep state operation. The FBI counterintelligence campaign with the CIA to not just infiltrate the Trump campaign, but more importantly, to subvert the Trump campaign and then eventually to bring down his presidency. To bring Trump down. He was part of the entire cabal. Why? I'll tell you why. Because McManiac is a spiteful, bitter, jealous old man who has never been able to forgive Donald Trump because President Trump won and McManiac lost. And he is part of the swamp and the Washington establishment, and the Washington cartel. And along with all these never-Trump Republicans, in alliance with the Democrats and the deep state, with the media, they said, you know what? We're going to bring this president down, by hook or by crook. John McCain is not a war hero. John McCain is not a patriot. If nobody else has the guts to say it, I will. McShame is a traitor. He is a traitor to his party, he's a traitor to his president, and he's a traitor to his country. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. 617-266-6868. Okay, your reaction now, McCain, central player in Spygate. But first, two hurt and a student in custody after a school shooting in Indiana. WRKO's Bill Trafiro has the latest from the newsroom. Take it away, Bill. Go to hell. That's what McManiac now says in his book, his memoir, The Restless Wave, to anybody who criticizes his decision for having acquired the Christopher Steele dossier used against President Trump. And he says he gave it to James Comey, and he said he would do it all over again. 617-266-6868. You know, is it me, honestly, or the last couple weeks, even month, how little I thought of McCain, I now think even less of him. It's almost like he's so spiteful and vengeful and angry 
that whatever reputation he has is now just in tatters. I mean, I'm, I'm asking you, is John McCain helping himself or hurting himself? 617-266-6868. Okay, lines are loaded. Let's go to Jerry on Cape Cod. Comrade, how you are, my friend? Comrade. <laughs> I have a message for you from Yuri. Evil begets evil, comrade. <laughs> I thought you were going to say McCain begets McCain. <laughs> I do not speak his name. Jeff. <laughs> You are a true patriot and a truth seeker, and you're a lion. You're a lion for the cause. Oh, thank you. Jeff, in his book, I have some questions. Does he mention how much money he gets from George Soros in the Saudis for his institute at University of Arizona? Jerry, no, he doesn't mention that, comrade. Th does he mention how he went in league over in the Ukraine with the neo-Nazis and the Svoboda party to fight against the Russians? Does he mention that? Well, he calls them freedom fighters, Jerry. They're neo-Nazis, Jeff. They wear the SWAT stickers. Jerry, I got to ask you this. He, he openly says this in the book, that he despises Vladimir Putin. He says he hates him with a passion. He says, I, I, don't, I don't hold back to anybody. Uh, I don't take second fiddle to anybody in my loathing for Vladimir Putin. Why is he so obsessed with Vladimir Putin? Why does he hate him so much? Because in 2008, when he requested from the Russian Federation and Putin for, for campaign donations, when he ran against Obama, he got nothing. That's why he's mad. Jeff, did, does he mention when he went to Syria with Muaz Mustafa to meet with ISIS? He doesn't mention that, though, either, does he? That's also left out of the book, comrade. And what about, what about the border with him and Jeff Flake? I wonder, do you think there's something nefarious going on there? I do. Jerry, do you think everything now we're finding out about McManiac and how he's really just sticking it to Trump, and now we know he was a part of Spygate, an integral part, is this going to destroy his reputation, you think? What reputation? <laughs> of a traitor? <laughs> Jeff, the bottom line is this. He is a stain on this nation, and it's all going to come to light. I agree with you. As always, great call, comrade. Thank you for that call. 617. That's why a lot of people call him McStain. I prefer to call him McShame or McManiac because this guy never met a war he didn't like. 617-266-6868. Al in Burlington, you're up next. Thanks for holding. Go ahead, Al. Hey, Jeff, do you remember who the senator was with the thumbs up and the thumb down? Oh, Obamacare? on the Obamacare repeal? Huh? The repeal, yes. And he looked at the Democrats and he smiled, that crazy smile of his, yeah. like a Roman emperor, and he went, thumbs down, right. I'm going to stick it to Trump, you're right. not going to repeal Obamacare? He, there's something about him, I've always said it, now look at what he did, he took his own personal feelings above the citizens, the voters, and what's good for this country, and he's a selfish man for that, isn't he? Isn't he selfish? He, he's so small... He couldn't put that aside and do the right thing for the country. Am I right or am I oh, wrong? Oh, you're completely right, Al. And Al, what do you make, honestly, like, you know, and to all my critics, i.e. conservatives, I don't know, Republicans, uh, you know, uh, Trump supporters, you can go to hell. I'm like, he's a dying man. You're di Al, honestly, you're dying of brain cancer, for God's sakes. You're 87, 88 years old. Are you looking to settle scores and give the middle finger to everybody? Or are you getting ready to meet your maker? You're getting ready to meet your maker, and you want to spend quality time with your family. Amen. Amen. Al, thank you very much for that call. Freddie and Beverly, you're up next. Go ahead, Freddie. Thanks, Jeff. Good to see you again yesterday. Freddie, so, it's great to put a name to the, well, a name to the voice now, and a face to the voice. Yeah, um, I was just going to say, boy, McManiac, he's just, a couple of things here, he's, he's just going to go out in a blaze of glory here. He's going to try to take down as many people with him as he can. Reminds me of Satan the devil. He's going to try to take as many people down with him as he goes. Um, but the thing I was going to mention here, um, I think they're trying to spin this whole thing around with the investigation uh, into Trump, you know, where all the spying that they did on him. I don't know if you saw on MSNBC, just after they were done 
praising McManiac. They had Richard Engel on there. He's in Israel investigating this intel company, an Israeli intel company called Black Cube. And they had this guy with his voice changed. He's sitting in, in shadow, in darkness. And they're saying that there were people in this Black Cube that were spying on the Obama administration, trying to find some dirt on Ben Rhodes and other people who were working on the Iran deal. And Richard Engel asked this guy in the darkness, he says, who wanted this? Who was trying to find dirt on these people in the Obama administration? The guy goes, well, we don't have a name, but all fingers point to the Trump camp. <laughs> Flips around, and then it shows Joe Scarborough afterwards, and he goes, oh, that Trump, he's complaining about being spied on, and it turns out he's been spying on the Obama administration. <laughs> but the Iran deal, Freddie, the Iran deal was 2015. <laughs> Well, this is what they're saying. That, he was that was, like, that's two, that that was almost two because, years before Trump ran for office. It was quid pro quo. <laughs> Trump was already spying on them, and so they just spun <laughs> it around. So as, a, as, a, yeah, as a private citizen, he was ordering our CIA, Obama's CIA, or sorry, Israeli intelligence, forgive me. He was ordering Israeli intelligence two yeah. years before he became president to spy so on Obama. Around now. <laughs> Gotta have a report on it tonight on MSNBC. <laughs> Jeez, these moon bats. <laughs> So now Trump was, uh, uh, so not only, so I guess, well, no, think about it. No, come on, think about it. He was a secret mole for Vladimir Putin the whole time. He was a secret agent. So not only was he a secret agent for Vladimir Putin, but listen to this. He was also a secret agent for Bibi Netanyahu. And Bibi said, hey, you're going to run for president, Mr. Trump. You're going to win, Mr. Trump. We can see that. We're going to spy for you on the Obama administration. <laughs> oh, they're crazy. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> the inmates are really running the asylum. <laughs> 150 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends. Franklin Platero Rodriguez. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Jeff, 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 who the hell is Franklin Platero Rodriguez? Listen now to this. You want to know why open borders are evil? You want to know why sanctuary cities are evil? You want to know why sanctuary states are evil? Listen now to this story. Franklin Platero Rodriguez is an illegal immigrant from El Salvador. He crossed into this country illegally. He's 21 years of age now. He crossed into the country illegally several years ago. He was deported back to El Salvador. Then he came back in as a quote-unquote refugee. But not just any refugee, as a quote-unquote unaccompanied minor as one of the so-called children uh, children who couldn't come with their parents and because he claimed that he was an unaccompanied minor a refugee guess what as our federal immigration policy demands they gave him temporary asylum status and like many of these so-called unaccompanied minors they have been on our taxpayer dollars resettled in 22 states across the Union. Massachusetts, by the way, being one of them, but let that go. Well, Franklin Platero Rodriguez got resettled in Texas, just outside of Houston. But there's one little catch. Because of our horrible vetting system, they forgot to check his criminal background. He wasn't just a poor, innocent child looking for the American dream. He was a hardcore MS-13 gang member. And as part of MS-13, he linked up with them once they resettled him on our dime in Houston. And they asked him to execute a murder, an assassination of a rival gang member. And guess what? He delivered to a T. Boom, boom, 
two bullets to the head, and an American citizen was dead. As the cops tried to arrest him, he fled in a car to South Carolina, where he was actually finally arrested. But the fact of the matter is, my friends, another American citizen senselessly, needlessly killed by an MS-13 gangbanger. And what's even more shocking is that we know, because according to official immigration statistics, that at least over 200 MS-13 gangbangers, all of them illegals, through the unaccompanied minor asylum system, have been resettled across the United States. On our dime. 220 that we know of, MS-13 gang members admitted as so-called unaccompanied minors, the children, have been resettled across the United States. These are rapists, murderers, human traffickers, heroin dealers. They're going to love Judge Feely. Just get them to Massachusetts. They're going to love this guy. That To all the MS-13 gangbangers out there, if you're listening, okay? Probably don't understand English, no comprende, but if you have a translator... Uh, Go to Judge Feely when arresto, when police arresto. Yes, demand Judge Feely that you walk on the street, no problem. No jail time -o, okay? Dumb gringo, Judge feely -o. Anyway, so we have over 200 MS-13 gangbangers that we, through the federal government's program, has resettled across this country. Furthermore, we not only have that, putting all of our lives and our families and our communities in jeopardy. But listen now to this. You know, Trump is right. When Trump says we have, quote-unquote, the stupidest immigration laws in the world, he is completely right. Like, this is insane. Like, this is legitimately insane. You know, Canada doesn't have this. Japan doesn't have this. Uh, 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 France doesn't have this. I mean, I could go, Poland doesn't have this. Australia doesn't have this. New Zealand doesn't have this. Only we, Ireland, doesn't have this. We're the only ones that have this insane system. But let that go. Let that go. So now, Representative Stephen King is saying enough is enough. He's an Iowa Republican, a Tea Party conservative. He's excellent on a lot of issues, but especially on the border. He has now introduced what is called the Mayor Libby Schaff Act. Who is Mayor Libby Schaff? She, if you remember, was the mayor of Oakland, who, when ICE recently wanted to conduct a massive raid in the sanctuary city of Oakland, and she's a big champion of, sanctu of uh, Oakland sanctuary city status, she deliberately tipped the illegal aliens off. She told them ICE is now in the city, they're conducting massive operations, Get out, get out, get out. And according to ICE, hundreds of violent criminals, illegal alien criminals, okay, members of MS-13, people they want for murder, people they want for armed, uh, um, armed burglary, people they want for rape, people they want for child trafficking, were able to escape because of Mayor Libby Schaff. Well, now Judge, uh, sorry, now Representative King, Congressman King, now says people like her should go to jail, literally go to jail. So he has now proposed a measure, piece of legislation, that would imprison government officials up to five years for obstructing the enforcement of federal laws. And so it's named after this Oakland mayor, Libby Schaff. Uh, the Libby Schaff Act, if passed, and I'm a big supporter of it, says that it would be, quote, unlawful for any officer, employee, or agent of a state or political subdivision thereof, i.e. a mayor, to obstruct, hinder, delay, or otherwise impede the enforcement of the laws of the United States or to attempt to do so. And if they do they will be sent to prison for up to five years. As Stephen King put it, quote, 
I want lawless sanctuary city politicians to hear this message clearly. If you obstruct ICE, you're going to end up in the cooler. Okay, or as we like to call it here at the paddy wagon. We're going to send you off to prison. On the paddy wagon. We're going to send you into jail. Okay, you're going to go to the slammer. Now, let me ask you. Should the Libby Schaff Act be passed? Is it time now for a law in Congress signed by President Trump that would make the mayors of sanctuary cities who are giving safe harbor and haven protection to not just illegal aliens, but to violent criminal illegals like MS-13, preventing local police and law enforcement from working with federal immigration officials. Should Marty Walsh, should L. Joe Curtitone, Somerville, should uh, Kim Driscoll of Salem, uh, Chelsea, all Lawrence, all of these mayors of sanctuary cities, should they go to jail for up to five years? Do you support the Libby Schaff Act? I do. I support it all the way. The question is, Cooner Country, do you? 617-266-6868. Is it time to lock up mayors who are openly helping Illegals give them safe sanctuary. The mayors of sanctuary cities, should they go to jail? And is the Libby Schaff Act the answer? Furthermore, MS-13 is now in East Boston. You don't believe me? I've also got that story and your calls next. But first, the president is hinting. Ah, didn't I predict this yesterday? The president is hinting that talks with North Korea are back on the table. WRKO's Bill Trafiro has the latest from the newsroom. Take it away, Bill. 